Hello everyone and happy St. Patrick's Day. Now let's talk about a movie that has nothing to do with this day at all. But I saw it today. The movie is called The Cobbler and for some reason it's an Adam Sandler movie that I can only find in my area in one theater. It's got a terrible rating on Rotten Tomatoes right now. I think it's at 7%. And on Metacritic, it's at a 21 out of 100. But I was really curious because I wanted to see this film. I remember seeing the trailer months ago and be like, I love the director, Thomas McCarthy. He gave us Win Win, The Station Agent, The Visitor, and he's got another movie coming out this year. And I like his work. And I like Adam Sandler. Yes, he is definitely more misses than hits these days. Well, he still makes lots of money. But he looks like in this movie he was going to try and do something different compared to what he's done with his own company in the past. So I was curious, even though I knew that it's just not very popular. I think you probably have a better chance of going on demand and finding it some way, maybe through iTunes. But I wanted to see in the theater so I could talk about it today. Adam Sandler plays a cobbler. He is a man who works fixing shoes. He's been, his family's been doing it for generation on generation on generation. His uh, neighbor is a hair, not hairdresser, but uh, cuts hair, played by Steve Buscemi. And he has kind of a friendship with this guy. And one day, one of his machines breaks down and he goes downstairs and he finds this old shoe fixing machine. I don't know what they call it. Sews, you know, whatever. Shows shoes, you know, puts, makes, fixes shoes, yes. And so he decides to use it and he finds out that if he puts on the shoes, he can become that person who wore the shoes, whether they're living or dead. Okay. So I really liked this premise going, uh, as it was happening, like for the first half an hour. Uh, I, I, I like that Adam Sandler was trying to be something different, a little uh, controlling in his performance. He's not really out there. He doesn't yell as much in this movie. Uh, there are some other actors in this flu in this film, Flume, in this film like Dan Stevens and Method Man and Ellen Barkin plays like this weird gangster. There's this whole plot revolving around uh, this apartment complex that uh, the city or these uh, people want to destroy so they can build these other buildings and there's okay I will ta tell you that uh, I will tell you I will tell you I will tell you that I didn't hate this movie I didn't hate this movie but as I thought about it more and more on the way home I I, I felt like it was just okay it's just a movie that's just okay it has so many interesting ideas about, you know, the ideas of you can only understand a person by, you know, how, you know, the only way to maybe understand a person is to walk in their own shoes. So I like the concept that as he puts on the shoes, he can become this person. But instead of making that something more important to the story, like, you know, put on the person's shoes, you find out about the person, you understand what the person is dealing with on a daily basis, whether they're living or dead, because there's some characters that are actually dead. But instead of that, they go for, and this is kind of sad because it's coming from Thomas McCarthy, who is, I think, a great writer and a great director, and I'm looking forward to his other film that's coming out this year. It looks like something more true to what he's known for, giving us characters we can truly believe in and care about, for the most part, all of them. But in this one, as he puts on these people's shoes, he doesn't really get to know them. He kind of just uses them as a plot device to make mistakes, to do bad things, to do some really good things, like learn and then grow and then try and do some good things, especially near the end. But, you know, we just don't really get to know the troubles and the lives, the real lives of some of the people, some of the people uh, when he puts the shoes on from those, some, from those people. So... You know, there's a lot that I really enjoyed about this movie, and then there's a lot that I just like scratching my head going, why did you take the easy way out? Come on, Thomas McCarthy, you're an amazing director. 
you've got some amazing, three amazing films, and maybe this new one that's coming out is going to be more exciting and interesting and more what you're good at when it comes to writing, writing about real people. I like the whole fantasy element. I like that, you know, he becomes these people. There's also this uh, plot about his father, uh, who's played by Dustin Hoffman, who passed away, and he's dealing with that. But then when the plot gets near the end, when we're dealing with the great actress Ellen Barkin, for some reasons in this movie, she plays this gangster woman, and she looks lovely. I really like Ellen Barkin. I always found her attractive and a great actress, and I just don't know why she's in this movie. Why is, why is her talent wasted? Why is the talent of Dan Stevens from The Guest, Down Abbey, and I think the future Beauty and the Beast, why his talents are wasted in this movie, too? Steve Buscemi's nice. Adam Sandler's... I liked Adam Sandler in this movie. I actually did. But the movie's just all over the place. You know, it has an interesting concept that 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 should not be a gimmick they could that is a gimmick but they could take that gimmick and give us something interesting as the character the main character played by Adam Sandler becomes this this guy who can change into these other bodies um, I didn't notice you know what there wasn't a I don't remember him changing in it to any women it was mainly just men you know why didn't they uh, incorporate more you know maybe you could deal with how what a woman has to go through you know, put on woman's shoes and find out what a woman has to really go through. You know, maybe an attractive woman that has to deal with men just godding at her all day. Or maybe an unattractive woman that's just, you know, dealing with the fact that she's trying to do the best she can. Uh, even though she may not be that attractive. You know, I don't know. There's all these things that the movie just missed out on. And I think that's a big shame from this film. It is not the worst movie I've ever seen. I don't know if it deserves a 7% out of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I just felt like this concept could have been used in a more important way. Something that really had something to say about society, had something to say uh, about how we should, you know, maybe understand someone who might be different from us, whether it's the color of their skin or their sexual orientation or their age. You know, all these things that the movie just really missed out on. And that's a shame. And I don't know, I could complain about this movie all day. I don't hate it. But I want to love it. I really want to love this film. But I just can't. It's really nice that Adam Sandler tried to do something different. Even though it's in a fantastical way with this big gimmick about shoes. Putting on the shoes and becoming the person. But in the end it just it just leaves me wondering what kind of movie we could have got from a really great familiar filmmaker like this. I think this this film should... The screenplay before it became a film should have been worked on more. You know, we should have gotten more interesting character development of the people... Uh, that we got to know through this whole experience as he puts on these shoes. You know, he's an old man at one time. He's a dead man at one time. Uh, he's a, a man that wants to be a woman at one time. So we could, I, I think there's some interesting things that could have happened instead of just doing what this movie does. And that's a shame. Sorry I talked about it so long. Uh, it just felt like I had a lot to say about this film because it just could have been a very fun movie that had a gimmick in the beginning but then had something to say with an important message but instead it just went for this really ridiculous convoluted and preposterous third act that I'm not going to get into but in the comment box below has anybody else seen this film I'd be really interested to know if you're a fan of Adam Sandler if you found it on demand comment box below if you found it in the theater but in the comment box below what did you think about this film that's all I really want to know. I mean, you know, it just have you seen it and what'd you think about it? You know, did you like it? Did you find the same problems that I had? That's what I'd be interested to find out. But in the meantime, I don't hate this movie, but I don't like it either. And I really wanted to like it because it was very watchable. At least half the time, it was very watchable. So for that, I am going to give The Cobbler, the brand new Adam Sandler movie that I don't think a lot of people have even heard about or even seen, I'm going to give the film two stars out of four. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and share this video. And also, please check out these amazing movie websites. And if you enjoyed this review, please click here to subscribe to my channel. And also, please check out all my recent reviews right here on YouTube. Have a great day. Live film. Find peace, happiness, and harmony in anything and everything you do. And I'll talk to you at my next movie review.